Production. Hi guys. Welcome to the candy shop. Have you guys been reading? Come on. I just want to know. Have you been reading? Hey. Get up, guys. We got to do a bit of a workout before we get started. Hero, superhero, officer, candy lady today. Hey. Check it out. I got a good book for you guys today. The Delfino Detectives. <laughs> Are you ready? Come on. Get ready. Hey, walk it out. Walk it out, guys. Come on, you gotta move your limbs. Get that exercise. I know y'all been sitting down for weeks. Now, school is out. Come on, let's get it. Hey, the Delfino Detectives. And it was written, guys, by Mary B. Guess what? She's the author. <laughs> hey. Illustrations, we know, are the pictures, right? Guess who did that? Her name is Jennifer Bartlett. Okay. <laughs> All right. The Delfino Detectives, guys. Let's take this book kind of serious. Because we're detectives today, right? Because we can be whatever it is we want to be. Look, William, said Laura, as she and her brother sat down on the front porch with their peanut butter and banana sandwiches. <laughs> hey, that sounds kind of gross, right? Let's keep going. There's a police car next door at Mrs. Watson's. I'm going to find out what's going on. Wait, Laura, said William. You can't just ring the doorbell and say, Hello, Officer Laura. Delfino here. What seems to be the problem? <laughs> but of course I can, said Laura. But guys, at that very moment, while they were contemplating, Miss Watson's front door opened <laughs> and out stepped the police officer. It startled them. <laughs> Caught them unexpectedly, right? They had no idea who was coming. Or the door was gonna open. Hmm. Laura, William, and their cat, Sadie, had hardly entered Mrs. Watson's yard when they were ambushed by Mrs. Watson yip yapping miniature poodle named Prince. Sadie was off like a shot and up a nearby tree, so Prince had to settle for with William and Laura. <laughs> hey, but guys, something was wrong. Let me tell you why. Prince's coat, who was normally handsome, dark and sleek, it sported strange pink spots all over it. And they weren't even as soft as his, as his coat was. So, something was wrong, right? Pink spots? Hmm, where did they come from? What happened, Prince? Asked William. But, but when the officer pulled away, Mrs. Watson stepped out into her yard. Prince, she called, come back here. I'm sorry, officer. He just got away from me. But what happened, asked Laura. He's been vandalized. When I let him out this morning, somebody painted my poor pink pookie pink. Oh my. And that police officer, guys, was no help at all. He just asked me a few questions and went on his way. Okay, so what could the police officer actually do about the pink spots, guys, that she couldn't do herself? <laughs> police officers ought to be called for emergencies, not pink spots, right? <laughs> Let's keep going. Look at him barking up the tree. And what is he barking at? And now, playful dog, right? 
<laughs> Suddenly, Prince ran, growling to the base of Mrs. Watson's hickory tree and stood yipping and jumping at the air. Hmm. Don't worry, Mrs. Watson, said Laura. William and I will help you. Oh, do you think you could? Asked Mrs. Watson. It certainly would ease my mind. Delfino detectives at your service, said Laura. We won't rest until we have solved your case. <laughs> they have a case at hand now, guys. Uh-oh, they're detectives. And today, so am I. <laughs> oh, thank you, I am most grateful. Come, Prince, she demanded. He didn't, of course. So William collected the wiggly dog and carried him to her. Come, Pookie, she said. Let's see if we can get you cleaned up. Maybe some mineral spirits? She took Prince inside. The squirrel ran hurriedly down from the tree. <laughs> Smart squirrel, right? Stayed up, up until Prince was called into the house. That was smart. Prince, I think, just likes to play too much. You guys think, think he's just a puppy and likes to play? William stood scowling at Laura. Any brainy ideas, detective? Maybe it was Mrs. Watson yard man, she suggested. Or the mailman. Prince hates both of them. Or maybe Adam from next door. Well, they don't seem like dog vandalizers to me, objected William. Got any other ideas? What do you think, Sadie? Asked Laura. Meow, answered Sadie disinterestedly and walked away. I guess we should look around, said Laura. I'll take the front yard and you take the back. Mm -hmm. Oh man, they're on the hunt, guys. They definitely had a case to solve. Now Prince is full of pink spots and no one has any idea where they come from. Let's solve this case, guys. We can do this. You know why? Because you're smart. Check it out. Laura checked the mailbox. It was empty. What could that mean? Hmm. She checked the front porch. Guess what, guys? Nothing. She checked the driveway and the garage. The lawnmower was in place. The grass, it looked at, like it hadn't been mowed in almost a week. Hmm. William, he checked the back porch garbage bin, the bird feeder. Then he went to check the shed, but it was locked. What should he be looking for? He didn't have a clue. Not yet, anyway. But they're looking. Hey. Great book, right? We're detectives today. We're using our imagination. We're gaining our power and our knowledge, right? All at the same time. <laughs> Let's keep going. Did you find anything, William asked Laura, after returning to the front yard? The mailbox is suspiciously empty, Laura whispered. William rolled his eyes. So, she didn't get any mail. What now? The Delfino duo decided to go home, finish their snacks, and strategize. <laughs> so they're using what they have, right? The knowledge that they gained so far to see if they can come up with anything. And they figured they'd do it over a snack. Did they come up with anything? <laughs> Let's see. When their strategy got them no closer to solving the case, William and Laura decided to break from detective work and pass the soccer ball around a bit. <laughs> That's cool, right? They need to shake it off, shake it off, and start over. William stopped the ball and paused. Is that Sadie at the back of Miss Watson's shed? Sadie crept along the ground ever so slowly, eyes fixed straight ahead. Who's she after? asked Laura. Mrs. Watson wouldn't like it if she gets one of her birds. Here, kitty, William called. Sadie turned her ears to one side and then back, all the while maintaining focus on the object of interest. 
We'd better check it out, said William. Hmm. What do you guys think she's after? he's after? What, I mean, what could Sadie, what could she be after? Look at her, she didn't even take her eyes off of the object. Even after they were, they were calling her to get her attention, she's focused. She turned her ears, <laughs> but not her eyes, not her head. Only her ears to let them know, I hear you, but I'm busy. <laughs> How cute. Hey, let's keep going, guys. When William and Laura reached Sadie, they could see that it was no bird that she was stalking. It was a big squirrel. <laughs> the squirrel stood, tail flicking, regarding Sadie critically. You can't get that squirrel, Laura laughed. Let's go, William. Wait, said William. Don't you notice something strange? <laughs> Laura looked, and her mouth dropped open. What could they have noticed? Hey, detective work. No one said it would be easy, right? But you don't give up. They noticed what? Pink feet. Uh, I think they found their corporate. Listen, at that moment, Sadie leaped at the squirrel. In a flash, he was across the grass, up the wall, and through a hole in the back of Mrs. Watson's shed. Sadie slunk away, annoyed by the whole situation. <laughs> hey, as they investigated more closely, guys, the duo noticed tiny pink footprints all around the ground and down the shed wall. I think we found our man, said William. Come on, let's talk to Miss Watson. <laughs> look how Sadie's looking. <laughs> I think that's a look of disappointment, right? Because, because the squirrel got away from her and she couldn't get her, but the squirrel had the pink paws, the pink feet. So, come on in, dears, said Mrs. Watson loudly, to be heard above Princess yipping and yapping. She opened the door and Prince, only slight, slightly less pink than when he went in, guys, took off after Sadie, who was looking on. Oh, no, thank, no, 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 thank you, said William. We just wanted to ask some questions. Do you happen to have any pink paint in your shed? Asked Laura. Hmm. Miss, Mrs. Watson thought, maybe I do have some pink paint left from painting my powder room. Well, then, was the shed open this morning? Asked William. No, 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 it was not open. She answered, I keep it locked to keep Prince out. That dog goes crazy in there. I don't know what, what he's after, but he gets in anyway. I think he dug a tunnel under the back wall. Can we check it out? Asked Laura. Why, of course, answered Mrs. Watson. Let me get the key. Oh my guys, they're on to something. I think, to sum it up, they got this case pretty much in the bag. Hey. <laughs> Prince came running as Mrs. Watson pulled the shed door open and squeezed through before they could even begin to see inside. <laughs> the door told a story, guys. There lay an open paint can on the ground, surrounded by splashes of pink. Hmm. Prince was yipping and jumping at the shelves from which the paint can fell. Mrs. Watson and the Delfino duo quickly identified the object of contempt. Of contempt. On the very top of the shelf stood the guilty squirrel. He paused for only a moment, looking at his unwelcome spectators <laughs> and flicking his tail nervously before leaping up and out through the hole in the wall. <laughs> she was right. Prince did dig a hole in the back of the shed. And that's how the squirrel has been getting in and out and caused all that ruckus with that pink paint. Hmm. 
Okay, so here's how it happened, said William. Now listen closely, guys. Prince got into the shed after the squirrel. The squirrel in his hurry to escape knocked over your paint. The net came off and Prince got a pretty splash of pink. Hmm. I think I understand, said Mrs. Watson. But how did you know? We saw the culprit outside, answered Laura. Sadie found him, pink feet. Mrs. Watson laughed out loud. Prince stood sulking, rather irritated that his squirrel had gotten away. Uh -huh. See, he was after the squirrel, after he couldn't get Sadie. So Prince went after this girl. I told you guys, puppies love to play. But everybody don't know that. Other animals don't know it either. Sadie, back down from her tree, appeared at the shed door. Seeing the cat, Prince took off with one sharp yip and in robot mode. Guys, but before he could reach her, Sadie leaped gracefully onto the workbench, just out of his reach. Meow, she said with an air of super, I'm sorry, with superiority. <laughs> And Prince yapped, Prince yapped and jumped helplessly below her. So she felt like she had authority and she had the situation under control because he couldn't reach her. <laughs> you two are quite the detectives, said Mrs. Watson, turning to William and Laura. Call us anytime, said Laura. Delfino, detectives at your service. <laughs> so actually, they saw the case, the case of the pink spots. Hmm. Pink spots all over prints. They solved it. Great detective work, guys. <laughs> the end. Great book, right? I thought it was pretty awesome. We gained some power. We gained some knowledge, right? By what and how? By reading a book. Walk it out, walk it out. You guys did awesome. And you can always reach the candy lady, guys. At 260-267-40. 4-7. Alright, you guys have a great, great day. See ya.